This poem was written in honor of my homeless brothers and sisters. This one's called Hospital Shoes. His shoes flopped. The Velcro wouldn't hold. What looked like old hospital shoes doing more harm now than good in his attempt to proceed forward up the steps out of the church and onto the street palpably humiliated, carrying far more than the strongest of men bear, seemingly embarrassed that he held up the crowd and clothed in jacket but no shirt, uncertainty, timid, uncertainly, timid, I followed just behind, trying to assure that it was no problem to wait. Great ones deserve reverence, I thought, and he had earned plenty, no doubt. His shoes fell, and I bent to retrieve it, uncertain if I should. A cloud of shame seemed to hang thickly that I fumbled in hesitation to know how to dissipate, as is not my gift. Should I have offered help? Was he at that moment sick of needing it? Did I have any, really? I did not desire to offer pity, but perhaps my silence made it seem that way, and printed it unintentionally as I passed. I looked at his eyes, wanting to acknowledge him as any other man I might pass and greet, and attempt to acknowledge his dignity. Yet I shivered as the words fell hollow that came from my mouth. Good willing, but palpably cheap. Have a good evening. There was something in the way they came out it seemed to be meant from an honest enough heart, and yet the words reached my ears. I feared I had left a stinging insult where I had meant in naive honesty. Really? A good night? Can I see? Can you see? As he stumbles full well in my sight and in the sight of all in shoes that don't fit. In the cold, and you do nothing? A reminder that others like you do nothing? The memory of the look harvested from his eyes seemed to imprint upon my heart. So filled they seemed with heaviness, a crucified Christ stumbling through the streets. Too many stories to even begin, a river of pain locked in a grown man's heart, unaware of his own beauty. His gifts and self-rejected, no doubt. One of the many who cry without speaking, I felt unworthy to be in his presence, sad that I could offer nothing to cheer him, though I resolved in poetry to make attempt, a small tribute though it seemed. I resolved to offer within my heart his pains to the Lord and to remember his face when occasions presented themselves to do something for someone, one who had suffered so strongly, much greater than I. How I yearned for the gifts of others in that moment, others whom I know, greater poets and artists, that in other medium, gifted with engaging, sculpting an encounter and receiving such a one as this, without the slightest impression of pity, well skilled with the poetry of awakening them to life and beauty, and harvesting their gifts with ease, since they offer before them most honestly, profoundly, and humbly the medium of their own need.